sorry. Uh, I think everybody's there, right? I think uh, we have, uh, let me see. Rodrigo Terra is there. And, uh... So I'm here as Sileni, but I'm Felipe. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hello, that's, Liliana. That is the yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sileni has not uh, changed. That's me. <laughs> Eliana, just to make sure, you briefly introduce um, Ministro Felipe, right? He, it was the opposite. He started. Okay. Perfect. And then Rodrigo Terra, our president, would do the welcome remarks, but he would, you would start on your side. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so you tell me when it's good to go and I'll just um, begin. Do we have an uh, uh, audience already, Eric and Patricia? I think some, yes. But we can wait a little bit more, five yeah. minutes. Okay, five minutes then. Uh, hello, I'm sorry, my mic wasn't working. Uh, I think we should wait a little bit more to 9.05. Is that okay, Elena? Elena? Perfect. Thank you.
I think I can start. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can see and hear you. All right, then. Um, thank you. I guess I'm doing the honors of, of introducing this. Um, let me allow me to present myself. My name is um, Felipe Bandeira de Melo. I'm a, a charge d'affaires here at the Embassy of Brazil in, in Pretoria, South, Af South Africa. And um, I'm, I'm opening then the webinar, South Africa and Brazil Gaming Industry Opportunities. So ladies and gentlemen, dear gamers from Brazil and South Africa, good afternoon to all, or good morning to you, my fellow Brazilians. Bom dia. It is a great pleasure and honor to welcome you to this webinar, aiming at bringing closer together the gaming industries of Brazil and South Africa. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to Ms. Eliana Russi from Brazilian Game Companies Association, Abra Games, who accepted our invitation to act as a moderator for today's um, conversation. Her vast experience will definitely contribute to efficiently steer the debate we are having today. Thank you again, Ms. Russi. I am most thankful to the South African and Brazilian institutions that co-organized this webinar with great enthusiasm and commitment. Those are Abra Games and Espesini from Brazil and Shimolohong, if I pronounce it correctly, AB4IR and the Innovation Hub from South Africa. I wish to also acknowledge the Innovation Diplomacy Program from the Brazilian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Brazil Games Export Program for supporting this initiative. And of course, I would like to express my warmest thanks to all the panelists who accepted the invitation to share their thoughts on this exciting and fascinating topic. This webinar builds on other similar events organized by the Embassy of Brazil in Pretoria and on the success of the Brazilian Game Week which took place in 2021 and involved Brazilian embassies all over the world. As you all know, the game industry is prone to grow up to 12% during the forecast period between 2021 and 2026. And both our countries, with extraordinarily creative and innovative minds, should benefit from the sector's development. Brazil and South Africa share many similarities, as you all know, including a young and dynamic population that loves to be online. And I am a witness of this, having a 16-year-old boy at home who is very much online. <laughs> we should definitely work together to benefit from this scenario. And that is exactly the main goal of today's discussion, to build bridges between stakeholders from Brazil and South Africa bearing in mind the importance of cooperation to strengthen the game market. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that as a result of today's discussions, we can set an objective and challenge to ourselves, which is to bring this cooperation to a next and fruitful phase. Thank you once again for your part participation and enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, all the team from the Embassy of Brazil in Pretoria, South Africa. I'd like to invite the President of Abra Games, Brazil Games Association, Rodrigo Terra, for his welcome remarks also. Please, Rodrigo. Hello, thank you, Eli. Thank you all. On behalf of Brazil Games Association, our games, uh, we would like to thank Minister Felipe uh, Gaston Bandeira de Mello, uh, Charge d'Affaires, and his team at the Brazil Embassy in, in Pretoria for putting together this great session for us. And obviously, uh, a good morning and a good day for you all across uh, the continents here. Um, of course, we, we would like to extend our thanks uh, to the Innovative Diplomacy Program, uh, which for me is, is one of, 
of the best programs uh, nowadays um, in, in, in the ministry, carried out by the Brazilian Minister of Foreign Affairs. So it's a great initiative that you sh all guys, you guys uh, should know about it. About Games, the Brazilian Games Company Association was founded in 2004 and represents Brazilian studios developing games, uh, Brazilian studios who, who develop games in all platforms here in national territory besides catalyzing the game production in the country by training and promoting expertise of our games aims um, at making brazilian uh, creativity and technology available to the main players and international game industry as well uh, we would also like to take this opportunity to take the brazilian trade and investment promotion agency apex brazil a great 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 partner of abra games uh, and our program together brazil games export program uh, for their uh, constant support over the last nine years of cooperation in promoting brazilian gaming industry internationally developing new business and opportunities for our companies so welcome all let's have a great session here today Thank you very much, both Minister and Rodrigo Terra. Um, I'm Eliana Russi. I'm the Director of Operations of Abra Games, Brazil Games Association. I'm very proud and glad to be here moderating this panel. First of all, I'd like to ask all the audience and speakers to close their microphones, to put their uh, cell phones on airplane mode so it doesn't ring in the middle of the session. Uh, this session is live. So it's being recorded and uh, it's going to be available in a couple of days on our YouTube channel at the Embassy and here at Brazil Games. Questions and answers will be uh, open at the end of the session. So with no further ado, let's start. Um, we are, it was already mentioned by Rodrigo Terra and the Minister that we are here today to explore new ways to cooperate Brazil and South Africa Let's put our talent and our creativity together to make it happen. So starting now, I'd like to invite all the speakers to briefly introduce themselves, uh, noting that Carolina Caravana, uh, who was one of the speakers, had a last minute uh, problem that she could not make it today. So we try, I'll try to fit on her words uh, mostly, but uh, starting alphabetically, <laughs> in order of the name of the speakers, it will be myself. So I already introduced myself, Eliana Russi, uh, Directors of Operations and the Export Program Manager at Brazil Games Program, our partnership with Apex Brazil. So I'll start with, uh, perhaps I'll mention, not correctly, but a Kelebochile from AB4IR. Could you please introduce yourself? <laughs> Yeah, and, and correct the way I said your name. It's Kile but short. Yes, but Kile works just fine. Okay, Kile. So can, yes. you, can, you, can you talk about briefly who you are and what is the institution you represent, why you are here? So I am Kile Bukhile, as it's been said, and thank you so much for having us here. Um, I manage an entity called AB4IR. That's Africa beyond the fourth industrial revolution. And I see my chairperson has also logged in and participating as well. So if there's anything else that I miss, he will also step in for me. So we are an um, incubator, an ICT incubator, based in the communities within a, a TVET college, working with the previously disadvantaged communities and introducing them to gaming, animation, virtual reality, and drone technology. Very good. Thank you very much. So the next one to introduce himself is Eduardo Cachucho from Chimolobo. Yes, a lot of mouthfuls <laughs> of all of those names. So yes, I'm from the Tmolochong precinct. We're a digital innovation precinct that is connected to the Witwatersrand University, which is a higher education um, university in South Africa and we are seen as their incubator wing. So we focus on working across software, hardware, and content, uh, and where we see video games is also quite squarely kind of between all of those things, and we like to really work uh, on incubating entrepreneurs at the middle of those three elements. I also am the creative director for a festival called the Fakugese African Digital Innovation Festival, 
uh, which we like to think of as the kind of most exciting um, creative space for digital creatives to meet pan-Africanly. And I think what also kind of interests me around that is, of course, having a South-South conversation is very interesting to us because there are such kind of similar issues and challenges to tackle. Um, so as a festival, this is fantastic, being able to speak um, and be on a panel like this with um, you know, our cohorts in Brazil. Um, and also from a festival side, of course, then we focus more on content, so really working directly with creatives and trying to build audiences in South Africa, because that's also a really important thing um, from our side to develop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So please, I'd like to invite Pedro Zambon uh, to the stage. Pedro. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Pedro. I'm uh, working right now as a coordinator of the Espacini Game Incubator. It's the first game exclusive incubator here in Brazil, fund, public funded by Espacini. They, local Sao Paulo's agency for audiovisual film uh, games industry. Uh, and also I'm working with uh, another project to support the development of the game industry. And this effort of the Espes in the Game Incubator, it's an uh, effort trying to help to improve the possibilities to self-sustainability of the emerging game companies here in Brazil. Uh, we are funding the prototype, the game development prototype, and together with this funding, we are providing uh, sharing contacts, uh, business knowledge, and helping them to produce uh, a more mature and uh, with a more possibility to live in the market and uh, attract private funding and all this kind of stuff. And then I'm working with all this kind of projects with different institutions, uh, helping on how to uh, make these uh, game developers and these uh, early stage game startups to survive into the, the industry, so that's it. Thank you and welcome. Now I'd like to invite Rodrigo Terra. Rodrigo Terra is the president of Abra Games, but he is also uh, uh, one of the founders of uh, an amazing VR studio in Brazil. So please, Rodrigo, come back to the stage. Thank you. So yeah, Rodrigo Terra, I'm the president of Abra Games and co-founder of Arvory uh, Immersive Experiences, which is um, a gaming studio focused on XR uh, gaming. So VR, AR, mixed reality and LB content as well. And then it'll be around here since 2017 as a company, but working with VR gaming since 2013, I guess. <laughs> There's a long time and journey until here. Um, and I, I have I have a participation on, on, on public politics for Brazil as well and, um, with other games to define and help to um, increase and, 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 and raise the, the awareness of uh, how the public governments need to be aware and participate on the growth of, 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 the, of the industry. Now, we know that uh, across the world, the gaming industry is, 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 is sky high in terms of numbers, developers and consumers. And that's why we need now, uh, if the government, if we, don't, we want the government to participate and don't be in the middle, but participate together, we need to uh, tight the, 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 the bonds with, with the government in some ways to, to, to make the dialogue flows in a better way. So that's one of my jobs in, in Ever Games as well. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite Juan Gisiwe Marhaya, the Innovation Hub. Please correct the name. Ah, you said it perfectly. Wadi yeah, Siwe thank, you. thank you. <laughs> so my name is Wadi Gisiwe Marhaya. I am the acting senior manager for Maxim Business Incubator. So we are an incubator focusing more on smart industries. Um, we are under the innovation hub. Um, so we focus on, on two areas, um, Maxim Smart and Maxim Digital. The Maxim Smart site looks at ICT and advanced manufacturing. And then on the Maxim Digital side, we look at gaming, animation, VR, and 
and um, augmented reality. So the, the innovation hub is basically a science park that uh, looks at uh, bringing in economic development around Gauteng and also bringing in uh, competitiveness around the Gauteng city region. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now the final one is Zolaili Mundla from Taxbrank. Um, thanks, Eliana. Um, uh, I knew that would be a challenge for you as well. So, Koli uh, Mundla. <laughs> Um, so I represent a company called Texprung. Uh, Texprung is um, a company that's really more interested in skills development. Uh, that's really a big focus of what we're doing or have been doing. Um, in the past couple of years, focus has switched to um, game development. So a lot of the previous work we've been doing has been in the IT space, but we've uh, moved into the game development space. Um, at present, I've been assisting um, a few organizations in terms of some of the work they do around game development, um, Innovation Hub being one of them. Uh, um, I've also been working with the animation industry body, Animation SA, um, because they are also uh, moving into the space of gaming because obviously uh, animated content is a key component of any game that is you know, being developed. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been involved in. Also working with government closely. Um, so uh, provincial government is uh, putting quite a lot of support towards gaming and animation. Um, so we've been engaging with them and trying to obviously, you know, uh, get support uh, to support the local game developers to obviously, you know, break into the market. Uh, some of the things Pedro was talking about, fund you know, uh, development of prototypes, etc. So that really is uh, what Textbrand does. And my key interest in this space is really using gaming as a tool for um, economic development and, you know, uh, upliftment of the youth. Thank you. Very good, very good. Thank you. So uh, we are now moving to the first topic. It's going to be three or four topics that we are going to approach. The first one is... The first one is for, I'm going to say your name wrong again, um, but it's from uh, Zo, Zo, X, oh, Mr. X is good, Mr. X. Mr. X, <laughs> Mr. X, uh, and for uh, one of the Brazilians also to, to interact. So what is the game um, industry value and the value chain of the game market? Can Brazil and South Africa explore global markets opportunities? And are we part of the global ecosystem? So from, from Brazil, I think uh, we would like to invite Rodrigo Terra and from South Africa, Mr. X. Please. Mr. X, you can start. Oh, all right, okay. I thought I was going to be second. Um, so. I, I didn't really go too much into the value chain for, for the gaming industry. Um, but I mean, obviously, what is key are the two ends of it. On the one end of the developers who are creating the content. Um, and I guess the question is, how do you support um, these individuals to, to bring to market products that make sense? And then that obviously fits into your distributors, your retailers, um, who actually get the product to the other important person in the in the value chain, which is actually the consumer. Um, and the question then, I guess, is do we have the kind of products that meet the consumer needs? Uh, because I think when we talk in the South African context, um, it's one thing to have South African developers creating content. But I think the, 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 the question we need to ask ourselves is, is the content we're creating um, matching the consumer expectations? Because um, living in a global village, um, you are pitched up against Ubisoft products and the like. So there is no escape to say, well, because it's a South African game, you should accept a product that is not at the same level. So, so I think in the value chain, those are really some of the things that um, I see sort of need to, to, to be addressed. Um, and then obviously we have the mix of esports coming in, which is another component. 
Um, I think a lot of the, the, the esports titles that are out there, um, yeah, are, are all from outside of South Africa. So, you know, uh, even that revenue stream, we haven't even started tapping into it. Um, but it's obviously uh, uh, becoming more and more lucrative because it feeds into the streaming market and the like. Um, so, so I think in the value chain, there are a few places where support is needed. And that's obviously where policy comes in and being able to, 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 to provide the support um, to the entities that need you know, that leg up to get them to a position where they can compete um, against this global content, against the global companies um, that are playing in the same market that we are. Um, so, so I think those would be the brief comments I have on the value chain. Um, in in terms of, and, and, and I think, you know, in terms of the, the game market itself, um, I, I, I think where the biggest opportunity for us lies is probably in the non-entertainment uh, space, in my mind, because I see that as the space where we as developers will be able to refine our skills improve the quality of our products because in the non-entertainment market at least we're dealing with our home markets our our customers who we have a closer relationship to than international um, um, game developers or content creators so there's an opportunity for us in that space um, to build ourselves so that over the long term we're in a position where we can then start to compete you know um, at these international levels um, so yeah, so so that's that that's that's my thinking, and I see someone has made a comment. Yes, education sector, um, but it's not just education. I mean, I think in the communication space, there's lots of opportunities for you know um, interactive type uh, content that can get information across and obviously embed the learning that you're trying to communicate with that material. So there's definitely a lot of spaces that uh, that we can look at. Um, in terms of the question, are we part of the global ecosystem? Um, for me, it's a yes and a no. <laughs> um, I think from the no perspective, um, we definitely struggle um, when it comes to commercializing the product. And I think primarily because, you know, when publishers or if you approach a publisher, the biggest challenge you're going to have is uh, volume, you know, so, so are you creating a product for the South African market? Okay, that's too small for a publisher. <laughs> Are you creating a product for the global market? Then you've lost your unique identity because now you have to water down whatever product you're creating to meet the needs of the global audience, you know? So, so we're sort of caught in between there, you know? And, and, and that's an interesting space we're going to have to navigate and see how, you know, we sort of get over those hurdles. Um, the second no for me is 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 is, is around the technology we use. Um, so because, as I said, our volumes are so low, um, it becomes a challenge in that um, when the technologies are being developed, whether it's game engines or whatever else that we use in our in our uh, our pipeline, the we are not thought of in our needs as developers, whatever needs we may have that may be unique for our specific markets are not taken into account because we're just such a small piece of the bigger uh, market, that becomes a challenge for us. So so those are the no's uh, when I say we're not part of the global ecosystem. But on the yes side of things, um, I, I definitely think there's opportunities um, so, I mean, Brazil is the largest gaming market in Latin America, and um, South Africa, maybe question marks, because obviously you have Nigeria, which is, you know, uh, also a growing market. But having said that, um, I think we are in strategic positions because what has happened is obviously publishers are looking for new ideas, new concepts, you know, because, you know, um, it doesn't necessarily help to bring out newer versions of the same game year after year. You know, consumers are looking for a new twist, something new to engage them that they haven't, you know, experienced before. So, so that's definitely an opportunity for us. And if we are leaders in our respective continents, um, I think there's opportunities for us to, to position ourselves strategically um, in that regard. 
Um, and I mean, leading on from that um, is essentially, I think there's a lot of stories. I, mean, um, I, I see uh, gaming as a, as a form of storytelling. Um, and I think there's a lot of unique stories that we have within our communities where we come from that we can tap into and we can use, you know, as, as that edge um, uh, within, you know, the global space, uh, the global gaming space. And I think lastly on that point, um, yes, we are part of the global community because we are participating more than just making games. I think, um, I mean, in the South African context, I mean, I know quite a lot of companies that are involved in, in importing of games, um, platform porting, etc. Um, so, so that's good for us because it's, it helps us to gain more experience. Um, and then secondly, um, you have uh, companies that are actually involved in larger productions, you know, as, 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 uh, as part of the BPO international developers, you know, who are plugged into uh, the bigger de game development. So, so it's a bit of a yes and no, but we are definitely a part of, or we can be a bigger part of the global uh, gaming ecosystem. Um, and I think the last question was, uh, can Brazil and South Africa um, explore global market opportunities? Um, that's definitely a big yes. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunities for, 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 for co-productions. I mean, so if I give an example, one of the projects that I'm involved in, um, it's a game that's, you know, sort of focused around African martial arts and so forth. Uh, but in one of the instances, uh, Capoeira is quite big in what we're doing. Capoeira comes from Brazil. So there's a lot of areas that can collaborate if we just see and understand what is unique from the other that we can leverage off and work together. But yeah, those would be my initial contributions. Thank you so much. Uh, Rodrigo Terra, uh, would you like to comment on the same uh, topics? Like, are we part of the value chain? Can Brazil and South Africa cope with us, like do things together? And are we part of the global market? Like... Yes, sure. Uh, <clears throat> talking about the Brazilian perspective here, trying to, 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 to create a perspective here. Um, Brazil has uh, a, a long, a long journey in gaming industry since uh, the, the the end of the nineties, uh, beginning of the the two thousands, right? So the companies here started to, or or we started to call it an industry, not just one company here and there, um, more or less at, at that time, right? So we have gaming company or software companies since since the eighties here in, in Brazil, but we we definitely could call that the industry started to rise um, on at the end of the 90s, at the beginning of 2000s, with the great rise in or starting to being uh, mature step by step since 2010, which we have the large companies that were founded, uh, the, the, the largest gaming studios now in Brazil were founded uh, at that time or a little bit earlier. Um, and saying about it, uh, we, and, and of course, uh, looking into the perspective here uh, from Abra Games and, and the programs that were uh, created to uh, make Brazil part of the value chain of, of the global, global industry in a way that was, uh, Brazil Games, for example, was the export program, which is a success uh, years in a row. Uh, they, the program, for example, created this opportunity for present the country, present the developers, present the opportunities uh, to the international players in a way that you can um, make them see the potential of this, uh, this grow, Brazilian growing market in terms of talents, in terms of what the students can deliver. And, and, and you, uh, uh, Zola, said about uh, the problem of okay, so this is great, but uh, for for the net, this is great for the international, but what about the national, right? So uh, we uh, we 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 here in Brazil struggle and have the same hurdles in terms of how 
the population identifies the Brazilian game. So we, we, we used to export service and export products to the world, but we don't have the nationals here consuming our products, right? So we have, obviously we have it, uh, and Brazil, the majority of the, of the country produces indie games, right? So we are definitely an indie uh, country with other uh, companies that make bigger uh, projects, but the majority of the country here produces um, uh, uh, indie games. And, and we have the same problems here, right? So we have the Ubisoft, we have EA, we have um, Garena, we have every everybody here down here too. Um, and, and having those games being the most preferable to play than, I don't know, uh, uh, other games like Horizon Chase or other titles that we have success uh, out there. So to that, uh, we we definitely for, from the, the the consumer, the Brazilian consumer, the national consumer, we have a long journey to do to create value for them and saying, hey, if you're looking to something different than than a triple way that you are used to play since you were a kid, if you want to try something new, creative, innovative and one to to play that on your preferable platform uh you should look in, into other games than just the, the bigger ones right so this is this is something that we were trying to to deliver as message uh since uh last year uh, and i i know doing that this one it's all it's almost a one on one uh situation that you need to evangelize and and and, and say hey there's an incredible world out there with incredible other stories and titles and culture to 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 be on the games than just what you are used to consume or just your great fps and so on so uh this is the, the, this is my first comment on the on the first topic if you are if you're part of a global village yes but we we are we we have actually done this work to be part of it in terms of providers service providers and product providers so we we've been learning to work with publishers more than 10 years ago and evolving this knowledge um since then uh, obviously publishing world change it and and it's changing year by year and saying well what's what the publisher wants right and we have the other component which is the investors right so we have the new component that are the VC funds or um, equity or other kind of funds that invest money on the studios itself, not on a project that the, the publisher are used to, right? And and of course, the, the role of accelerators and incubators, one of them is, is, is to create that approach as well. Uh, and, and the gaming industry in a, in a whole, right? So in the whole world uh, and, and in Brazil, we, we, we are seeing this movement of having the VC capital flowing into to studios now uh, and helping them grow uh, and grow fast, right? We don't know, we don't know, we don't know this year from, from, from now if this liquidity in, in the market we're going <laughs> to be be there next year but until now we had this opportunity of having investors as well so i think the the, the, the movement of of growing studios and making the community stronger and and and, and making studios uh, being make the studios being uh, in a way that they can they can definitely make them work and not not be aware of needs and paying uh, all, all the bills. As as an in the studio, we we know uh, 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 we know that in the studio when we are when you are in the, in the studio, you definitely need to be worried uh, on every on every bill that that comes to you know, in, in your front. Uh, and having that opportunity to give them time to explore what they're doing, to invest on their creativity, to invest on team and talent and make them uh, approach that way. So that, that, that's one thing, that, that's one way that we, I believe that we need to, to address nowadays how to grow uh, this developers community, the studios community and developers community as well. 
Uh, and that's that's I, I that's why I think we're in a global village in terms of we are connected with with the international in a way that that many many more companies in Brazil are working as in South Africa works with bigger titles with triple A games um, providing external development and creating art creating code creating uh, any sort of you can imagine of service that that we're playing with great companies like Sony Nintendo Xbox. Microsoft, etc., uh, and uh, and now we, we have been recognized often with titles that came from Brazil, and and are being recognized in awards or or, or other festivals as well. Uh, that we are seeing that well, definitely Brazil is creating um, uh, innovation in a way. Uh, because these games are now being recognized from the community, the global community in itself. But I, I agree that we are in a moment that we are, for example, need talents, right? So, and that's a problem throughout the world, right? Uh, we, we need talents from, from whatever you can think, right? So art, code, QA, finance, um, <laughs> Everything. Just pick a vertical, uh, and then we need winning people. Then it's not a, just a Brazilian problem. Right? We're seeing that's a problem throughout the world, actually. And they just said about, uh, and then they say about the education. So uh, not just get, creating products for education, actually, uh, using gaming and the platforms, but one of, I think, one of the roles as association and and uh, with the public entities and, and other uh, entities that uh, they are they care with about the the, the gaming industry. Uh, is to provide ways to develop new talents, of course, but also develop these relationships with other countries like Brazil and South Africa in a way that how we can collaborate in terms of talents or can we uh, be together in a project and then we hire each other and then we can grow our team together to maintain I'm saying that because it's easy to hire someone in, in Asia or it's easy to hire a company in Canada uh, or, or the United States. But culturally speaking, if we were trying to make a point and a difference in terms of, uh, in a way that in, in a game that we want to make um, a, a kind of, or just not, not even a statement. I mean, if we want to maintain culturally the talents speaking together in a way that they can understand each other easily, for us, it's better to work with a South African company than exactly a uh, Canadian or American. We can work with, with everybody, but but I mean, culturally speaking, uh, is, is is something that I, I I see as an opportunity to to step further in um in a relation. Thank you, Rodrigo Terra. The next question is about education, so I'll I'll link to what you just started to say and. Um, uh, two difficult questions <laughs> is, can we say that the game industry is open and inclusive? And what is the role of education and training? And for that, I would ask two people from South Africa, Wendy and Caleb Bolli, to start their comments, please. Okay, so I will start from my side. So when I got the question, my first thought was gaming is part of the new revolution, um, is new tech, you know, there's, we're learning new every day about the way we do things and also learning more about each other because now we have a global village. So when I looked at it, I said, for me, it's the digital divide that's a problem. That's the first one. So without fixing some of the issues we have there, it's, it, it would be impossible for, for us as a community, and when I say community, I mean the global community, to be able to participate fully in gaming. So when we look at the digital divide, there are some issues that we have in South Africa, for example. In South Africa, we have, um, let's say we look at culture. We have different languages. We have even family, different family backgrounds, the income, education. Um, we look at maybe, let's say, our approach. Um, 
Some people are still scared of using technology. Some don't have um, motivation to use technology. Socially, we look at literacy skills. Um, are some people literate enough to understand what a game is or what gaming is? Um, and then we look at disabilities. So, um, so on the on the on the spectrum, we have different disabilities that I won't go into. But there are some people that do very well when uh, when they are learning using games but some do not even understand the tech that is attached to gaming so and then there's old people and new people so all in all for me when i started looking at it i i just looked at it as a, as a technology and as africa what is preventing us to excel in any technology so those are the things that i came up with and then i looked at policy so in south africa currently we do have our national plan, meaning that 2030, we have a few pillars. We want uh, job creation, we want quality education and so forth. But even there, we don't name gaming. We don't name creative arts and where we want to go um, regarding that. Um, I think we forget that in the gaming space, there are actually careers like Rodrigo was saying there are careers that people can take. You know, you have psychologists that we, that work with gamers now, and and try and figure out what uh, people are responding to and so forth. So there are different type of streams that we can take, in in even in our um in our higher education. You know, because I know now we are focusing more on ICT. So your IOTs and the fourth industrial revolution, all the famous technologies that are being used around the world. But I've only had one person who's saying my cousin is studying gaming. So that that should tell you how how we are standing in terms of skills and education. And then in terms of um, also the ecosystem. So when Rodrigo was, to was talking about the ecosystem and what we can also bring into our ecosystem to work. I found that it's not structured at all in South Africa. Maybe my colleagues, I think that is why we are in this platform as well, to make sure that it gets structured so that we can be able to, to, to work with companies like Brazil. We can be able to attract talent um, and we can be able to transfer skills. So that was basically my short thought on the on the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um Caleb please. Ah, awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Wandi. Um access is one of the things that um is a is a really big um challenge that we also experience when we're talking about skilling. Where we based now, we're within um a TLET. Um, what is that technical vocational skilling um, kind of setup? It's within a township. We call them townships, and the access and the awareness levels um, towards the gaming and animation, what we call creative industries, is very low. Yes, you are right. We need new talent. We need talent, but. For us to even talk about new talent, there must have been an exposure and awareness of sorts for people to even be aware of um, the value and opportunity that is in the sector. We have been in existence now, this is our third year, and skills have been one of the things, well, upskilling, reskilling, and literally just introducing a new skill, and particularly this gaming that we are talking about has just been a, such a new phenomenon when you are um, trying to create a vision of being on a global stage and roping in women because more than um, digital divide, there's also gender divide. Last year when we invited Pedro to participate in our um, Worldwide Women in Innovation, Incubation and Technology Summit, I was excited and taken aback to find out that, in fact, Brazil has got more game, um, more women in the gaming space than we do. Like you should see, on average, when you invite um, people to come and participate in any of the 
offerings that 90% is, is 95 even is guys. When you start talking gaming, animation, VR, we've ran v, um, sub, uh, several training programs and 99% is guys. Where are the women? And that's again where the opportunity comes in, where we are. We, we have access to bringing in the gender to introduce the gamers, the so women to be excited about it, to be passionate about it. But infrastructure is another issue that we have, we have issues with, right? Um, we would like to skill people, would like to bring them in, but for gaming purposes, you need really good infrastructure. You need like good internet speed. When we came to where we are situated now, we literally had no um, fiber facility. So now there's the first barrier that we're working with now we have to before we can even talk about skilling people build infrastructure that would get us to be able to assist and do what we we plan to do so there is various um barriers that we are dealing with locally where communities are are concerned there's great interest the other thing is um, the platforms are increasing. The other reality is the pandemic has made has pushed the gaming industry so much. I mean, we were all locked up in our homes, and suddenly there were so many things that could be done on the PC, on your smartphone, on on the actual PS4s, and all those different kind of things. There was opportunity for software development. And we were also trying to run different game development courses for people to keep themselves busy. Um, Timulu Hong has done some work. Uh, Professor Barry has been on the forefront as well, talking to gaming and the opportunities that are that uh, come with that. It it can really be an awesome opportunity. One of the things that we are trying to do now is to create um what is it? hackathon hackathon platforms to say how do we gamify education like gaming is fun i mean it really makes it brings out emotions right it makes you happy sad excited curious it helps with motor fine motor skills it helps you solve problems and for us it's also one of from an entrepreneurial point of view it brings up that thing that we talk about fail fast fail forward well when you come from a disadvantaged um background you can exactly uh, work with or well, fail and waste resources, waste resources i'd say but from a gaming perspective it allows you to do that you learn you relearn you correct your mistakes you get back to the game and then you get a new um what is the word uh, passion you get a new way of looking at things and different ways of solving the problems i like what rodriguez was also saying when he was talking about uh time team and talent we have a particular game gaming uh, company skinny boy they've developed a really awesome game but these three particular um factors are stuff that they're also battling with in terms of finding the time and as a team and using their talent to see where they're going in but it's really awesome being where we are now working within the disadvantaged communities bringing in all these elements that we are um, introducing to them and opportunities of like i'm really hoping i was saying to helena that I'm, I'm i'm hoping the next step would also be can corona please go away then we can look at soft lending opportunities we'll take five brazilian gamers on a soft lending opportunity and we'll bring in five south african um, gamers because that's part of cross skilling um, culture exchange and just different ways of doing things. The final point that I just want to raise is also access to actual studios. We work with disadvantaged communities where issues of bread and butter are real, where somebody that literally does not have a dollar a day to just make ends meet. And now we're talking about them taking their skill, bringing it in, publishing, and, and, and the value chain and ecosystem that we've been referring to is really expensive. Gaming is fun. It's a, it has great opportunities. We're talking about trillions of rents that are in the industry, but how do we 
provide access for our gamers that are within these communities that we're working with to develop the skills to use and create. So we also now expanding to create a gaming and animation studio that they can use as part of skilling them and as part of accessing and creating their own, own value chains to publish their own games and create their own market kind of thing. So yeah, that's us in terms of skilling and just doing our development within the communities, yeah. Thank you very much. Here in Brazil, we created in, in AgroGames, at AgroGames, our, our association, a diversity board in 2018, like six years ago, to deal with this issue of, uh, we didn't have any women, like the, the, the average of women in the game industry in Brazil was lower than the, the rest of the world, and the rest of the world is still low. So we created that board and then we faced ourselves with other other challenges. It's not only women that are out of the industry, but all minorities and how to make uh, the industry more welcoming to anyone, right? So yes. Brazil has this problem of uh, disadvantaged people do not have access to all the technology that is required yeah. or the hardware and everything. So it's, it's, it's really an emerging uh, country yeah. in terms of uh, distributing uh, wealth and education to everybody. So I yeah. wonder if anyone from Brazil would like uh, to comment on the, this topic before I move to the other one. This topic that uh, they just uh, commented is, uh, is the game industry open and inclusive? And what is the role of education? So I don't know if Terra, Rodrigo Terra or Pedro Zambon would like to make a comment on that. There's someone just yeah. there. Yeah. Who's coming? Yes. So I can I can make a brief comment about uh, the the role of the education uh, looking in the side of Brazil. We, we have this huge problem on talent shortage. So uh, we need the, the the game industry double its size in ten years. So we came from a nine billion dollar industry in two thousand twelve to a two hundred billion dollar industry in two thousand twenty two. So how do we grow uh, an industry uh, in, in the same level of the, the market is growing? And it's, it's pretty impossible to uh, the university itself provide all these talents because, because we, need, we know that what Rodrigo Terra has, uh, has a co uh, and Arvory as a company needs and the, these company needs is not recently graduated uh, students, but they need uh, 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 senior talents, but how do we build senior talents uh, this fast? So th that's the main challenge of the, of the education programs right now. So what, what, uh, how to mind this gap between uh, who is recently graduating from the universities and the demand of the industry itself? And, and uh, 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 the problem around this is that the, who is teaching them in the university are not experienced game developers because the experienced game developers are demanded into the industry itself. So uh, how, how do we make the industry go to the university to teach the new game developers to become uh, the game developer that we need? And all these problems are really uh, challenging. And uh, I really believe that uh, these incubation programs connected with the university are a kind of uh, way to connect the industry and the university where so with something in between that, that, that can help them to uh, build their skills, build their knowledge, connect with the industry itself, uh, and uh, go out with, uh, into this incubation program with our more seniorized skills that the, the industry demands. But we need this faster. And that's a, a really challenging and connected with these diversity issues. So how into the education system, we create uh, an environment that uh, provide opportunities for uh, a more diverse uh, 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 population. So how do we attract women and all these kind of people uh, to feel that gaming production is a career for them? Because one of the things that we are facing in the education system right now is that well, uh, a woman go, go to a class in game design and 
she is the she and two of them is the, the only girls in the room so uh, it's not for me uh, they, we need some uh, pro some uh, initiatives like the diverse uh, sampa diversa uh, venue of uh, global game jam uh, or woman game jam so events that attract women around another woman's uh, and uh, into the industry to work together and see that that game production is something also for women. So all these uh, issues around education, it's something that we need to face as an industry because it's something that the industry needs to uh, help to develop. Uh, and of course, government can provide the funding of the programs that are, are uh, demanded to mine this gap. So I, I think that's, that's the, the, the main problem around education. Thank you. We have uh, one Desiria Mahaya that would like to comment too, please. Uh, thanks, Pedro. Yes, I, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, about a month ago, we had a, a call out for new cohort for our incubator. We only received two women applying and we got over 30 applications. So. And, and that was a big uh, um, note for us. And then we decided that this year is the year that we go for it. We find women wherever they are. And if there are issues, then we need to know what the issues are. And we need to go out into the universities because we do believe they are in class. Um, they are um, going through these programs, but then what happens? So as the Innovation Hub, we do have um, a open IX, which is a challenge uh, where we combine private or government, a government entity where they need a solution. Um, but the solution then would be a tech and ICT solution. So this year we, we, we were deciding and saying maybe we should look out for a gaming solution. We need to go out there and try and get the universities. To, to give us gaming solutions, just to push and make sure that we are keeping the innovation alive in, in universities. And another point that I wanted to add, um, you know, representation is very important. So one one point that I, I, take, I took note of was that in the LGBTI community, we haven't had any or there are only a few games that actually represent that community and so the point that we're talking about here was inclusivity so that also involves them do they see themselves in the games themselves you know so i thought that was really interesting and it's something that if we are going to look at including people we look at all types of communities are they are they include are they included do they see themselves do they understand uh, but from from my side i think we we actually and another sorry another thing that we actually did for us because we've been running the innovation and the innovation hub incubator for a while now but the digital side the one that i was talking about which was we are we are um, gaming we found that, that we don't have mentors that are really dedicated to assisting our entrepreneurs technically in that side. So we went on a call again to get those mentors and I'm happy to say that we managed to get a few. So we we're really excited that those skills can be transferred. And, and also um, in South Africa, we have a shortage as well of jobs. So for us, even someone graduating out of university getting an internship is a big thing um, because there are just no jobs for people to just make money for their families. So to your point, when you are saying the big um, experience developers, they go somewhere else and they are in demand somewhere else. Uh, I think for, for our country, even if they get internships, they get transfer of skills, that that will surely as well boost the 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 the, the industry thank you thank you thank you rodrigo terra raised his hand so please yeah just just a brief comment and and tying up what you what you're saying um 
when when we're talking about when we're going to talk about diversity in terms you know in a widespread concept um we we need uh, of course uh, and tying up with some comments that i'm reading here in the chat as well so infrastructure and and obviously uh um what well, what what's the game industry can represent to these communities that 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 we are addressing um in south africa and, and brazil as well so uh, here we try to uh to to foster those those programs into communities that are not uh super well connected to development system what do we have is uh, I think it's the same thing in, in South Africa as well. In, in, in many cities, is we have uh, well in Brazil it, it, the, the scale is bigger, but but I ha we have a lot of players. Right? We have a lot of esports or, or someone here now here in Brazil the the young and new generations doesn't want to play soccer. You know they want to play Free Fire. They want to play. Fortnite, uh, uh, not just dreaming about being a soccer player, you know, uh, and you guys know super well about it, too. Um, and that that's the point. Uh, it, it, we have now a population here in Brazil that definitely needs that we lack the, 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 the device. We lack we, we lack some of the devices. But one thing that we have here is the smartphone. So people will plays in smartphone. You can even uh, uh, be and, and, and live in a community as, as, as our township here, the favelas, right, or the, the, the communities here. And, but everybody here has a sort of smartphone and have a sort of connection. And doesn't mean that they have the best connection or the fast 5G connection, but obviously they have, uh, they come with ways to play, right? Why? public Wi-Fi or, 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 or having other ways to, to connect. And we have the smartphone here as a driven, as a gaming device driven. Saying that it's the first, I think it's one of the first stores that we can have to uh, bring more uh, people to the industry in a way that if a, if a woman, if a young girl or, 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 or another um, uh, person starts to play those kind of games, and we're talking about, okay, so we're talking about AAA games from, from the north, right? But it's something to, to, to start attracting uh, or, or it's our role as, as, as entities to create and the meaning or, or showing the meaning and the connection between, hey, if you game, those kinds of things in your spare time, why don't you make that your living in a way that you can start developing uh, for it? And you need to, well, no, you just need not, not, not need just to play, but you need to do, you need to know what, what's the back end is, right? So the coding, the art, and how to assemble games together, etc. And comes the, 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 the challenge of, okay, how to provide um, an ecosystem or provide, um, solutions for that one that can afford anything of it and they are struggling to 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 have money to bring to their families um that's that's where i think solutions like accelerators and incubators and places strategically placed in those communities but that doesn't if someone needs to take a bus and take like five hours to just go to study and then go back that's a problem Right, so these initiatives needs to be where the community are. Right, so that's that that's one thing. And the other is we need more spotlight of games and and developers and studios that works, uh, and they have representation. When I say that, for example, we have a game here. It, it, it's a kind of it's not new, but 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 it's getting uh, attention now. A game called Unsighted, uh, done by transgender uh, women. Um, and that's now becoming more and more popular. People were playing that here in Brazil, outside Brazil, being published through other platforms, being ported. And, and, and the game itself doesn't bring a vision, a specific theme, transgender uh, um, uh, flag of this is, this, is a, 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 this is a game about transgender. No, this is a game made by transgender people. And it's a very popular and universal language, but the vision, the perspective, the way they tell the story, the way they design it, the gameplay, the way they do the, the, the game itself brings 
the the challenges, bring the the concerns, bring the the the, the politic position, etc., to the game itself, and then it can spread out the world. So bringing those initiatives to the spotlight, it's one thing that we I, I think we missed a lot. So we usually uh, say about games that are being done by and and that, and them that position, right? So being man white and being here in positions that can 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 have uh, the word to speak for for something but the problem is we need to to have those people speaking about uh, gaming that's how we are gonna track right so representation is not just let's find out and scout i think this is a very important this is a very important part of 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 the job but not just that when you find it you need to give the spotlight and struggle and uh, to bring those games to the right spotlights, the media outlets, to the um, festivals, and 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 making them in the center, not just in a discussion about culture, but in a discussion about gaming itself. So not being just creating a niche about the discussion, but is definitely point that as a mainstream thing to say, hey, this is the new mainstream. This is what we want to show up, and this is a great game. This is a great, this is a great design. And by the way. It's 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 done uh, by someone that you never thought could be doing games, right? So that's that that that's for me. I think it's it's one of the the points I want to make. And inclusion is about uh, it's about that, right? So bringing diversity is bringing to the, the to to the spotlight. Thank you, Terra. Uh, Nelson, we are going to open for question and answers uh, after the next stop. Uh, but for now, we're just uh, having the speakers uh, doing their presentation. So you just hold for a minute, please. You just hand your hand. And uh, I'd like to invite uh, Pedro Zambon and then Eduardo Cachucho to uh, kind of a wrap up. And uh, let's uh, consider what are the global opportunities that Brazil and South Africa can jointly pursue? Like, what is it that uh, after we, we're here for an hour discussing, similarities and the difficulties and challenges of our countries. Now, how can we do something together? So I'm going to invite Pedro to start and then Eduardo, please. We'll come back to you later, Nelson. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of these topics, it's already approaching here, but I'm trying to summarize some, some of the topics. So uh, we are facing common challenges. Uh, we are facing uh, the challenges about being an emerging country facing the historic colonialism consequences. We are ge geographically marginalized countries in the global south with a lot of challenges to attend the main industry events. So for a game developer uh, in Brazil or in South Africa, it's uh, it's expensive to attend Gamescom, to attend GDC, to attend uh, XDS and all the main gathering of the industry. Uh, we are facing limited access to private funding because these private funders and the, the, the huge funding uh, 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 sources is centered into this, uh, into Europe or uh, UK or uh, North America or even in Asia. But uh, since we cannot access the events where these funds are attending, we are, we are lacking contacts and access uh, with them. Uh, and locally, we do not have this uh, vibrant private funding ecosystem uh, to uh, fund game production. Uh, he, he, even here in Brazil, that we have uh, a, a, a really driving startup funding ecosystem, these fun funders are not looking to game production. They are looking to uh, everything else. Uh, and who is funding the game production here in Brazil are foreign uh, funds. Uh, that there are rich in our companies. And also we are lacking knowledge, skills into business development in gaming industry. Uh, we have a lot of game producers that are really good at making games, but they have no idea how to profit from them. No idea how to create business model around gaming production. Uh, and also we have all this talent shortage in the global gaming industry reflecting locally. Uh, so our best talents are being dragged to the biggest companies around the world paying dollars and euros. And we need to keep them in here uh, with all our efforts. Uh, so how do we face all these things? Uh, we have these challenges, but also we share some opportunities. The first opportunity uh, that it, it was already mentioned here 
is our vibrant and growing local consuming market. So uh, it's really tricky, and um, Rodrigo already mentioned about that, the, the challenges on uh, to connect with the local uh, gaming community. But uh, we need to uh, broke these barriers between us game developers and our uh, local audience and uh, the possibilities. For, for example, we are seeing Japan or China or Korea uh, they are really, really, uh, the, the local game development community uh, are really exploiting the local game uh, consuming scene. So we need to uh, uh, take in this advantage also. Uh, but the world wants our gamers. The world wants uh, the South African and Brazilians playing their games. So our, uh, us as a game developers can provide play testing for them. We can provide uh, some services uh, to connect uh, our local uh, gaming community uh, to understand how our local gaming community go into uh, up, uh, to, to uh, field their games and uh, uh, use their games. Uh, another opportunity is the cost of money. A hundred thousand dollars in UK or in Germany or in US or in Canada uh, worth a lot less than in South Africa and Brazil. Because the cost of living and all the things that we are saying about inequality in the world uh, economy, that's it's a kind of advantage here. Because uh, the same money to produce uh, a prototype in some places, it's a money to produce a vertical slice or even uh, a, a half of a game here uh, in uh, in Brazil. So uh, I think in South Africa we have the same thing that the the uh, investment money worth more here in Brazil. And, and there is an outsourcing opportunity uh, connected with that because uh, to, uh, uh, to contract an outsourcing company in Brazil or South Africa is cheaper uh, and the quality is the same also companies in Germany or in Finland or in Canada. So we, we can take these opportunities also. And uh, I, I want to address, of course, the diverse creative talents with non-conventional cultural background. The industry and holiday, uh, say the, uh, the industry and the publishers are looking for different ideas. Uh, we are, uh, the, the industry are kind of saturated on Nordic and Greek mythology backgrounds. Uh, and we have a lot to offer in terms of cultural backgrounds. That it's uh, something that we can, uh, of course, to make it international looking things. But uh, in terms of ideas, uh, or, or for example, game design uh, uh, solutions, or and all these kind of uh, things that we can provide with our diversity cultural background, it's something unique that both South Africa and Brazil have in common. And uh, we have another thing that is the possibility to grow our workforce. So the problem that Finland or Germany or UK or Canada have is that their population are already all taken in terms of workforce. The, it's really difficult for them to grow their workforce because the population are they they have a, a low population with a, 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 a they don't have a, so many young population and they need to bring from many for all the places around the world their talents to grow their companies. But here in Brazil and South Africa, we have a lot of young talents uh, that are willing to work and being trained and participate into the game industry. So we have where to grow in terms of workforce. Uh, but what we need to exploit these opportunities, we need a holistic ecosystem development programs that understand games not as a part of ICT or as a part of, of audiovisual, but we need to understand and build something around the specificities of this complex industry in the intersection between creative and tech industries. We need to understand games as games, not games as ICT or games as audiovisual or games as something else than games. Because uh, we know that a mentor about uh, startup building uh, uh, business models cannot help a gaming company. Uh, so we need to attract this uh, knowledge uh, about the specificities of the game industry. 
Um, I, I, I will list some ideas about what kind of cooperation possibilities we can use together to exploit these common opportunities. For example, a cross promotion and participation in industry events. Uh, so Eduardo, we mentioned the festival. Uh, we have big festival here in Brazil. Why can we? Uh, why can can we make something together with these events? Bring South Africans here to Brazil, uh, bring Brazil to South Africa, and create this kind of cooperation. Uh, and of co of course, cooperations in terms of partnership with game jams and hackathons, uh, like for example, Game Jam Plus here in Brazil. Uh, that is a game thing uh, that happens globally. That born here in Brazil, and we have a South African team going to Brazil uh, in uh, July to the grand finals of Game Jam Plus. So we need more game gens making together. And for example, creating some game gens and hackathons mixing Brazilian and South African talents to cooperate. Uh, we can think on uh, in incubation and acceleration programs cooperation. We, we can share demo days, play testing sessions, mentoring, master classes, activities. Uh, so for example, uh, your incubees can play uh, the games made by uh, my incubees and my incubees can play the games made by your incubees. Uh, it's an easier way to cooperate and it, it can be really, really valuable, for example. Uh, we can build, of course, with the government, co-development funding programs uh, that stimulate this co-production. And of course, the knowledge is put over around it. So a Brazilian company, a South African company, uh, funded to cooperate in a co-production program. Uh, and uh, we can produce first a, a lot of activities based especially on the pillars of funding to mitigate risks, connection to enable opportunities, and finally knowledge to achieve success. We need these three pillars to really uh, go to the next level. And finally, uh, I, I want to invite all the incubation initiatives in South Africa for us to create a knowledge sharing forum for us to uh, share all this uh, information that we are learning from our process. So that, that's it. Thank you, thank you. Now we're moving to the last speaker, which is Eduardo from Tishimo Logong. Thanks, Diana. Yeah, well, I think there's been, I mean, relevant comments from everyone. So maybe I'll also like in a way kind of wrap up. I can't agree more with everything Pedro was saying. Um, I think one of the first things I was going to say is communication is so important. I think even just having a chat like this is really vital. I think that's also why festival moments are so important. Um, at the beginning of this year, there was Africa Games Week, where a lot of people from the continent were here, uh, in, well, we're in Cape Town, talking about gaming across sectors. And that was such a kind of illuminating moment. I'll pop in the chat some of the stats of this kind of South African gaming industry, which is very intense to see. It's a very untransformed space. So some of the research has been really important also to see how do you start tackling that. Um, and one of the big problems has been, as people are talking about, is where is the middle management? It, it is almost impossible to get them in the spaces. And sure, you can be also training very young people coming out of universities and program till you know till you go blue but if there are not people to manage them and manage the process you cannot hold them and they will actually not be transfer skills because there is nothing to transfer um so that that's a really important thing and i think something that was coming up in my mind was the non-aligned movement for some reason i think something that rodrigo was talking about is also the cultural element we have very similar socio-political backgrounds. For me, it's, it's kind of interesting that we do not have more cultural engagement. So I'm so happy that the kind of this discussion is happening because yeah, as also Pedro was saying, I mean, I've been kind of looking at big festival for quite a while and I'm very interested in what they're doing because I mean, as far as I can see also South Africa is quite a few years behind, maybe a decade behind Brazil in the kind of, gaming sector so what can we learn and how can we overlap that because we also have um you know it's advantageous to us as kind of non-aligned countries i'd call them to learn from each other and to learn how kind of brazil has come through some of its early years to get to where it is we're also clearly in a kind of much more developing stage but you know there's also ways to learn and transfer knowledge from each of those spaces and then for me, kind of from my perspective, 
um, running a festival is a festival is a great space to do that. How do you share knowledge? Um, you know, and that can be done through platforms like this. I think it's really important. So some of the things I was thinking about is, you know, it's also just letting similar kind of studios know that each other exists. You know, it's, it's even having something like Africa Games Week where people meet each other in person. You start understanding what are the capacities, what are people able to deliver. Um, and I think something that um, Zolile was also talking about, and I think that's something we focus here at Samola Hong in general, is we're also not trying to fight against the kind of world system and trying to develop people who can like compete on a global level because there's just too many people. We're actually focusing on people that are hyper-skilled in each vertical that they're working in and are at the top level. Because if you're trying to generalize, you're never going to be able to compete on the global scale because there are just so many people who can just you know, pop in and deliver your element. So, and I think then that connects very strongly with what Rodrigo was saying about culture because we have content that's interesting. I mean, I was thinking about this recently in terms of um, LGBT kind of elements. I think it was um, when, when the Syria talked about it. So I've been just noticing some things uh, like appearing on, um, on Netflix, for example, like LGBTI kind of content. And I was thinking, you know, this would really, it, it's like takes so much time for these things to enter into the mainstream. So even something like Netflix, but it's clearly happening. And that wave is starting. We can kind of all see how popular content in very specific kind of niche audiences are becoming like really massive cultural movements in general. So I think we, sh yeah, we shouldn't kind of undervalue the, the kind of cultural interest that we can generate as long as we're able also to support that because that needs quite concerted also financial support it needs governments to support the development of that so i think it, it does sound like south africa is quite a bit behind where brazil is i mean the programs you have sound quite incredible and that's part of what's been indicated in the research is it's going to be really important in South Africa for us to lobby the right government departments to really be behind us to be able to, you know, set up a concrete co-development strategy for, you know, with countries like Brazil. Uh, but that, that will take time. I think it's also, you know, there's priorities that the government has. And of course, if you look at these, this data in terms of how untransformed, um, and not representative of the gaming industry. Of course, the government is quite skeptical to want to be pumping money into an industry that is 82% white, which is exactly the opposite of the demographics of our country. Um, so yeah, but I think extremely positive is communication, which something like this is starting. And it also seems like everyone is quite excited and open to have those conversations. So I think that's really important. Oops, just open my mic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eduardo. We are just about two minutes from our um, wrap up, really the wrap up, like it's, we've been here for an hour and a half almost. I'm going to do open for Nelson's question. And I'm, if you don't mind, if the speakers don't mind, may I put your email on the chat link? So if they have more questions, they can ask. Yes, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy it here. And uh, Nelson, please, you can, you can ask your question. Okay, uh, I have a simple question. I develop games for blind and deaf people. And I'd like to know how is the market in South Africa, okay? And if he, in this project that you, you are doing here, uh, starting with this session, uh, I want to know if the only digital games is possible, because when we we have disability people, people is necessary to to have the physical games too. Okay. Thank you for your for your question. Very good indeed. Who would like to answer that, please? Okay, Pedro. 
see yeah. you moving your lips. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so unfortunately here uh, in uh, especially in the game incubator we, we are just incubating uh, digital games so uh, but we are open to all kind of games so uh, a game with this specific uh, uh, audience of uh, Zebo and, and, and that people I think it's it's a really good to for us to explore uh, this community because we have gamers uh, that into this demographic and we need to explore even as a market explore the opportunities that to provide games uh, for for this uh, uh, for this market but I, I i confess that i don't know a lot about this this market so uh, yeah it's it it's that, that's all they can 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 do can i just add that that's part of the inclusion that we were talking about as well Part of the demographics we're leaving behind. One teammate mentioned of the, um, hey, the, the alphabets. Yes, um, and and in fact, last week Friday we had a stakeholder session where one of our stakeholders actually actually asked that question, like the apps that we are developing, the games that we are developing. How are they inclusive of? The, the the blind and the disabled. How can we play into that market? And I think. Actually, Pedro, the market is there, but it's not explored because we take it for granted that you need to be fully able, you need to be visual to see and do what needs to be done. I've just been exposed to a friend, a family friend that literally just went blind uh, out of the blue. And now she's in Cape Town relearning how to do a whole lot of things. And that was part of it opening it up for me. There's a school not far from where we are here that deals with the disadvantage and we are actually looking to take advantage of that and see what we can do with them because also about 10 kilometers from where we are, there's a village of the blind people. There is so much that they're excited about and, and that is part of those communities that we are leaving behind. That's a really exciting solution. I'd like to talk to you more about it. Because we, we really do have, and we've started looking at that market. So it would be exciting to explore something that has already started. Nelson. Thank you very much. Okay, I, just, I just put on the chat the name of an organization that is global. It's called Able Gamers. They have a chapter in Brazil. I just put the name of the president here. Uh, they work uh, with Games for Disabilities. Last year at Big Festival, they made a presentation, and it was really, really the impact of that, of people playing and how they develop the games to make it possible for them to interact, it's its amazing. And uh, so we do care a lot here in Brazil uh, to encourage uh, studios and developers to work with uh, games for for minorities, for disabled people. So it's not, uh, it's not of course, a simple question, but uh, we look into that too. So I'm going to uh, ask uh, if uh, the uh, embassy team in Pretoria would like to, to finalize the session or we can go ahead and wrap up. Thanking every, for our side, to the Brazilian side, I'm thanking everybody, all the speakers and all the audience that were here. It was a very, very interesting and uh, with the, the, the team at the Pretoria Embassy would like to say a few words just to wrap up. Yes, thank you so much, Eliana. Thank you all the participants. It was really engaging and it was a very interesting um, panel uh, and very dynamic. Um, there are many things that could uh, be, be developed together. Uh, we took down of all the, the new ideas and we're probably going to be in the near future um, trying to put them together so we can help the two industries jointly grow. So thank you all very much and thank you for the audience for the great participation on the chat and on the questions. Thank you so much. Uh, this video, this session has been recorded. So in a couple of days, maybe the end of next week, we will have it on online on our YouTube channel, our Games channel, but we also send it to the speakers so they can uh, distribute and promote to their communities and so we can enhance the discussion and open the dialogue. So thank you very much and that is it for today. Thank you so much.
Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet you all too. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Good to meet Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for everybody. Thank you, Nelson. Thanks, Nelson. Thank you. Cheers.